So welcome everyone. So today I want to get really, really straight to the point and I want to give you a lot of very useful and actionable information. Because when it comes to premature and early ejaculation, there's a lot of misinformation and misleading or um, insufficient information available, you know, online. And where some information, you know, can be correct, it's very often not sufficient. Like people will give you one piece of the puzzle, but not all the pieces, which makes for that so many men have tried for years to overcome premature and early ejaculation but they haven't managed so a lot of guys <clears throat> excuse me are really kind of a bit disillusioned and and thinking that maybe there's not a way to resolve this so I want to come in here today and give you my full toolkit for how you can overcome and shift premature ejaculation and what the areas are where you need to focus work because there is some work to be done if you've had this pattern for years, maybe since you first started having sex, which is very common, then it's going to take some work to shift it. But it's very possible when you know what to do. So this is what I want to share with you today. And uh, please stay on until the end because there will be a special offer at the end, which I'm going to tell you about right at the end after I've given you all the information that you can take home and start using straight away today, even if you are single at the time. So um, welcome and so great to have you here. So let me know if you're excited about this because I'm pretty excited about it. I've been talking about this in the group in bits and pieces, but today I'm going to put it together in a very, um, very solid and, and tool filled box for you. So there's the three key areas where you need to focus your energy if you want to overcome premature and early ejaculation. And the first area I like to focus on the first area is actually your approach to sex. You can call it your sexual strategy. So this is where a lot of guys really keep themselves trapped with PE because they're using the same strategy to have sex which is not working. And that's why they're not managing to get results. You know, you might manage to last a little bit longer sometimes, but in a big way, you're not really shifting the problem because of the strategy. It's because of how you have sex. And... Um, most people don't think so much about this because there's a lot of assumptions around what is like how you have sex, like everybody knows how you have sex, you know, kind of thing. It's like a, a, a normal, assumed of a normal way of having sex. And that is the way that doesn't work for you if you have premature ejaculation, at least not in the beginning. Yeah. So in the beginning, you need to do it in a certain way, which I'm going to describe for you today. It doesn't mean that you always have to do it like that, but in the beginning, you got to make it easy for yourself so you can start to experience some wins straight away when you're making love. So the strategy that most people have to sex is that they, they are very focused on the orgasm. They're focused on, as a man, you're focused on making your, your partner have an orgasm. You want to try and make her come. So that's, that's a problem for you because if you are trying to not come at the same time as you're trying to make her come, that's going to make it pretty much impossible for you to last. So this is why it's so important to take the orgasm out of the picture. So this is the step number one. You need to take the orgasm out of the picture. Forget about trying to make an orgasm, which means you're also forgetting about your orgasm. As if orgasm didn't exist. You can think of it. So if you're making love with your partner, you want to be in the present moment. You don't want to think of trying to go towards an orgasm because it's that mindset, thinking that you want to make her come and also knowing that you will come at some point. That is what keeps you trapped, part of what keeps you trapped in this pattern. So first of all, you want to take the idea of orgasm out of the picture because in reality, we have an orgasmic potential. Everyone has a multi and omni orgasmic potential in our bodies. Our bodies are so incredible that we can start to open up to this orgasmic potential in a way that we can start to feel so much more pleasure in every single part of the lovemaking, not just the climax at the end, but actually open up to our potential to feel orgasmic pleasure in every step of the way as we make love. 
And when we start to open up to this, we actually open up to our ability to feel orgasmic and, and pleasure in every day, in all sorts of different situations, in all sorts of different things we're doing. But for that to happen, we need to take the idea of reaching a goal out of the picture. So um, the other thing you need to let go of, and we're still talking about point number one here, there's still key number one. I will tell you when we go to key number two and key number three. So there's quite a lot of information here today. So good if you're taking notes. So the other thing, when you're making love, you also need to let go of the idea of friction type of sex. So most for most people, normal sex is entering the woman and then you start moving in and out, right? Because that's how most people have learned to experience the pleasure. So this is what also needs to change. Yeah, in the beginning, doesn't always have to be like that, but in the beginning, you need to stop with the in and out movement as much as possible. So when you enter her, you need to actually be still and be still and connect and breathe as you're inside her. And what happens when you do that is quite amazing because where you might think that, well, I'm not going to feel anything then. Maybe she's going to get bored because there's no action happening. Well, on the contrary, what happens when we slow down and stop is that you will open up to this orgasmic potential. You'll start to come notice all the subtleties, the subtle sensations. And your genitals, both yours and hers, will start to come alive. And they will start to connect in their own way without you trying to do anything. So you can move a little bit, but only as little as you're sure that you are staying well within the parameters of where you're not going to ejaculate. And for most men, that's about 60% of arousal when you're starting this out. So get away from the idea of in and out friction as you make love when you want to overcome PE and start to do still and slow lovemaking. And the slow needs to be so slow that you are not even near ejaculating. Stay around 60% arousal and pause. If it gets too much, if it's too much even to move a little bit, just be completely still and connect. This is an opportunity to really connect deeply with your partner. And women love this. She might not be used to it, so you need to introduce it to her and explain to her what you're doing. Explain to her that you want to have tantric sex because this is tantric lovemaking. It's all about the connection and being here and now in the present moment. And this is how you will awaken the ability to feel more pleasure. So you're not going to be missing out. But stop that friction, the idea of friction and orgasm. And the next thing, we're still on point one. The next thing is when you're masturbating. So for most men, they have actually trained themselves to ejaculate early because of the way they masturbate. So most men masturbate in order to ejaculate and have an orgasm. But if you're doing that frequently, if you're doing that, if you've done that since you were a young, you know, a teenager, and you're still doing that, you have effectively and continuing to program yourself to ejaculate early. So you can still masturbate, but don't masturbate until you ejaculate. Stop well before. And I know this is very unusual for most people takes a little bit to get used to and also really good idea to get rid of porn because the porn is programmed and designed to make you ejaculate. So if you're watching porn then you're making it very difficult for yourself. So the great thing you can still masturbate as much as you want just don't ejaculate. Just masturbate to connect with yourself to give yourself love to feel that amazing feeling of aroused energy in the body Allow yourself to feel the energy with your whole body. That's so important because for most men, the sexual energy builds in the groin and it kind of gets a bit stuck there. So you want to start to feel the arousal in your whole body and start to get used to hold larger and larger amounts of aroused energy in your body because that is key to learning to last and become a master of your ejaculations. So masturbate without porn but stop well before you ejaculate. And with that energy in the beginning, it can feel like, oh, what am I going to do with this arousal? Because you're so used to the thing of ejaculating to release, 
But what happens when you ejaculate to release? You deplete the precious life force that you build up. And you're going to start to feel the urge to masturbate, to ejaculate again. This is why so many men are trapped in this vicious cycle of porn masturbation and ejaculation. And they do it a lot. And they're depleting the energy. So they start to lose their life energy. They start to lose the ability to last. They're losing even the ability for mental clarity and willpower and, and purpose and direction and ambition in life as a man. You're, you're becoming more feminine if you're ejaculating a lot. Now, how's that? If you want to become more masculine, start to masturbate without ejaculating. Okay? We're still just on point number one. Okay? But that is pretty much, in essence, what I want to share with you in regards to the first important key area if you want to resolve premature and early ejaculation. So, let go of the idea of orgasm for both her and yourself. Let go of the in and out friction and start to do still and very, very slow lovemaking, only to 60% arousal. And when you masturbate, masturbate without porn and not until you ejaculate. Stop well before you ejaculate and start to train your body to hold larger and larger amounts of aroused energy in your body and start to own it. Start to own that energy. Start to feel it in your whole body. Express it through your whole body. Walk down the street owning that sexual arousal okay how does that sound tell me if you love this guys i'd really love to know if this is valuable for you who's having aha moments who's having insights let me know if you love this be great to hear okay and take notes because now we're coming up to point number two the key area number two which is really really important to understand and put work into so the area number two Awesome. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah, so the area number two is all about your ability to stay calm when you're getting aroused. So for most men, probably all men who struggle with premature and early ejaculation, you get very excited and you get a little bit anxious as you get aroused. So you're going into sympathetic nervous system, which is when we are actually in fight and flight mode. So with the nervous system, we have two sort of key states. It's just a very simplified model, but we have the sympathetic nervous system and we have the parasympathetic. The parasympathetic is active when we are in rest and digest mode, when we are relaxed and everything functions optimally in the body, immune system, digestion, we're feeling calm, we can access all our thinking abilities, we can have empathy, we can connect, everything's working very well. And the sympathetic nervous system is the fight and flight and freeze mode, which was designed for our survival. And it served us very well through evolution of humanity. It enables us to react within a millisecond in a dangerous situation and, and get ourselves to safety without needing to think about it. So this is how our nervous system protects us in emergencies and allows us to run faster than anyone else if we are, for instance, chased by you know, wild animals or something like that. So that is very useful in, in emergencies, but it's not useful if you're making love to be in the sympathetic nervous system mode because you are agitated and anxious and you will ejaculate prematurely as long as you're staying anxious and i know that this is <clears throat> this can sound now like something like but how do i do this so this is where there is work needed to put in but the most important thing and the first step is to be aware of this so that you notice for yourself when you are starting to get a little bit anxious and anxiousness and excitement are very similar so this is about starting to notice and be aware of yourself and you can do that most easily when you are masturbating to make sure that you are staying calm and relaxing in your whole body and that you're breathing deeply so that you're not starting to breathe fast and shallow because if you do that you will get yourself very quickly to ejaculation so to help yourself to to learn to train yourself to become calm more easily and to be able to to hold that calm also when you're getting sexually aroused that takes some practice 
And there's different ways of doing this, but breath is key. To breathe deeply and slowly, like deep belly breaths into your belly, is so important. And for some guys, that can be tricky because they've been holding a lot of tensions in the belly. So notice what that's like for you. Are you able to breathe deep breaths into your belly? Or is it a bit of a struggle because there's some tension in there? So next point, I'm going to talk about the tension. Right now, we're just talking about becoming calm. And the deep breathing is essential for that. You can lie down on your back. It might be easier for doing deep breaths if you struggle to get the air into your belly. And start to practice on a daily basis, all through the day. Pay attention. Am I holding my breath? Am I not breathing properly? You know, whenever you, rem whenever you remember, pay attention to how you're breathing. And allow yourself to breathe deep breaths into the belly and to breathe out. So you're not holding your breath. Slow, long breaths out through the mouth really helps the nervous system to regulate. It's like you're shushing yourself into a relaxation mode, almost like we're doing with babies, like a baby that's stressed or... or agitated, <sighs> calming yourself down and really getting into those deep belly breaths. So this is something to practice whenever you remember during the day and it's going to help you in lots of other areas of life as well, not just when it comes to ejaculation and mastery. And another practice that's really, really helpful when it comes to building that ability to hold calm, it is meditation, a meditative practice. And that can be done in lots of different ways. It doesn't mean that you have to go to a monastery and sit 10 hours in lotus position. But it's something that you can start to bring into your life maybe 5 minutes a day in the beginning. Or 5 minutes in the morning, in the evening. Maybe a little bit longer. And there's different ways you can meditate. So in this group, you know, there's already 7 Monday videos. Sorry. It's 7 Tuesday videos that are talking about meditation there so they're the hashtag number one two three four five six seven of the total tranquility videos so if you haven't watched all of them and you want to learn about ways to to practice and build your ability to to create a meditative state then go back and watch all those videos so um let me see yeah another thing that's also we're still on point two Another thing that's really important when it comes to helping yourself to stay calm is your mindset and what you're telling yourself. Because very often when we have a pattern of doing things in a certain way, let's say you've been used to ejaculate early for, for years already, so you already have some beliefs around your ability to last that might be quite negative. So it's important to become really aware of what you're telling yourself. If you're telling yourself, you know, before you're going to, to make love, you're saying, oh, I hope I'm not going to come too soon in your head to yourself. Your subconscious mind will, will hear, come too soon. Because it doesn't understand negatives. And whatever else you might be telling yourself could actually be programming you to come too soon. So this is where mindset work is really important. That you start to have a good look at what your beliefs are in regards to your ability to be an amazing lover, to last as long as you want, etc., etc. And in this group, we also have seven mindset videos. They are the Monday Magical Mindset videos, hashtag one to seven. So if you haven't watched all of them, you can go back and look at all the mindset videos where I'm giving you tips and tools about how you can learn to work with your mindset so that you're really supporting yourself from within. Super important. And very often the stuff we tell ourselves we're not really aware of because it's kind of under the surface. It's in the subconscious mind which is 95% of the mind that is under the surface. So it takes a little bit of probing to notice what is going on there and make sure that what you're telling yourself is positive and supportive in regards to your ability to, to learn this stuff. So let me see. So that was point number two. And now we're going to go into point number three. So point number two was all about your ability to stay calm when you're aroused. See how we're going with time here. 22 minutes. Okay, we're going good. 
Okay, so the third point when it comes to learning this, to learn ejaculation mastery and to beat PE and early ejaculation, is your ability to move energy freely in your body and let go of energy blocks and pent up emotions. And um, that is actually something that's really important and reason why things that you might have tried in the past didn't work. Because if you're like most men, you have, and women as well, not just men, we all have energy blocks. We have blocks in the body where we're holding energy because we've suppressed emotions. And because there can be some kind of trauma, things that happen in childhood or things that happen in regards to sex with a partner, where you've stored negative emotion and you created an energy, energy block where energy doesn't flow really freely in your body. And for most men, their sexual energy is always concentrated in, in the groin and in that lower part of the body, but it's not able to flow freely. And what happens if that's the case for you is that when your sexual energy builds, it will reach to a certain boiling point and then it's like your body can't hold it anymore and it will be forced to exit through the closest exit, which is to your penis. Yeah. So this is why you want to start to liberate those energy blocks so you can start to free the energy so that your sexual energy can actually start to spread through your whole body. So that it doesn't get stuck in your groin where it will reach a boiling point and you will be forced to ejaculate. So when it comes to freeing energy blocks, there's people doing healing work, there's people that can help with those things. But I like to look at it like this, that you're not actually dependent on anyone else to, to heal or remove your, your energy blocks. But we can actually do it ourselves. And the most important step is the awareness about this and the intention that you're going to do it and the willingness and the focus on that you're actually going to do this. So you need to have a really clear intention and the belief that you are going to liberate those energy blocks. You're going to liberate your energy so that it can flow in your body and you're going to let go of whatever has been blocking, wherever you've been suppressing emotions. So the intention here is the most important step. And even just bringing your awareness to it right now, if you do that right now, just check in with your body. Take some deep breaths and feel into your body and notice. Where are you holding energy? Where are you suppressing your energy? Do you have some anxiety sitting in your body somewhere or some other emotion? Check in with yourself. And wherever you notice there's some tension, there will be a bit of a block. So bring your energy there, bring your intention there and just with curiosity. So we're not forcing anything. It's not about forcing or, or pushing anything away in a rough way. It's much more about allowing and accepting yourself. Because by allowing and accepting, uh, we relax. And it's much easier to let go of energy blocks when you're relaxed, relaxed and in an accepting and loving mode. So you can start to play with this. First of all, just with your intention. Check in what's going on in your body. And decide that you're going to start playing with these energy blocks. You're going to start releasing them and move them along. Let them dissipate, evaporate, turn into thin air, and blow off. So what really helps when we want to do this is to start to get into your body. So this is about getting into your body in a way that's not structured. It's not about going to the gym or, or going running, even though those things are also really good. But when it comes to removing energy blocks, it's more like an intuitive way of moving, of letting your body guide you to what it needs to do in order to liberate the energy. Because the amazing thing is that your body actually knows. It knows how to heal and it knows how to come into perfect alignment if we give it the space to do so, if we create the environment for that to happen. So if you're running around stressed, holding energy, tense, worried, and telling yourself bad stuff, then that can't happen. You can't release energy blocks like that. So you need to help yourself by getting into a state of relaxation, positive mindset with the intention that 
today I'm going to remove some energy blocks and I'm going to continue with that until my body is really free and liberated. And the breathing again is your best friend here. Those deep breaths and allowing yourself to let go on the out breath. Really letting go on the out breath. You can visualize. Visualization is super helpful here. Visualize that you're really letting go of weights of your body. Letting go of energy blocks. Visualize them dissolving. You know, maybe in whichever way you prefer to visualize this to happen. Do it your own way. So breathing deeply, visualize letting go of the energy blocks and help this along with spontaneous and free movement. But you're letting your body guide you. You're letting your body guide you to what it needs to do in order to free these energy blocks up. And the body knows. So you can do this by just creating a space for yourself where you close the doors. You can have some music on. Make sure that you know phones are turned off. Nobody's going to disturb you. And allow yourself to tune in with your body. And let your body start to show you what it needs to do to liberate blocked energy. Very great to get into moving your hips, for instance. Circulating your hips. Getting into moving your groin. Very often guys have very rigid hips. And it wasn't always like that. You were very flexible when you were a child. But because of we've learned to conform and perform and behave, we've you know, made ourselves rigid. So you want to start to counteract that by getting into your body and let your body guide you to what it needs. Does it need to do some certain like spine undulations perhaps? Spine undulations are really good. Hip rotations. And again, there's no need to force. Gentle movement is good. And listen to your body. The body can also start to show you that it wants to do some more strong movement. You know, go with that. Really, if your body's starting to show you, follow. Trust it. Even if it looks like it's going to look really weird, that's probably indicating that you are on the right way. And I've, you know, played with this very much myself. And I know that sometimes my body will start to show me some weird movement. It will make me do some really weird movement. I'm like, why on earth am I doing this weird movement? And after doing that movement for maybe a minute or two, all of a sudden, energy is liberated. And I realized, oh my God, there was an energy block there. And my body knew exactly what to do to free that energy block. And that comes from giving the body the space to show you. So this involves really connecting with your body, really becoming intimately in tune with your body. Start to listen to your body. Let your body show you what it needs to heal, to come into alignment, to let go of the energy blocks, to let go of emotions. So especially in regards to suppressed emotions, that can be a little bit scary for us. Subconsciously, we're suppressing negative emotions because we have learned that they're bad and we don't want to feel them because it's not pleasant. So what you want to do here is actually the opposite to that. You want to welcome those emotions and give them space because it's by welcoming them and feeling them that you allow them to release and go. By suppressing them, you make them stay. So if you start to notice there's something going on in your body that could be suppressed emotion, welcome it, invite it, allow it, help it along with deep breathing, help it along with giving it some sound. Now how's that? Some sound. Very, very helpful. So this is going to start to look very weird. I know that. If you're a normal guy, you're going to go, holy moly, <laughs> what are we doing here? So this is the pathway to actually make this shift happen sustainably and organically and for real. Yeah? To start to release the energy blocks, you need to welcome the emotions. Allow yourself to feel them. Allow the emotions to express through your body, whether that is through some wild hip movements or some stomping, some deep grunting sounds. Maybe you even need to scream in a pillow. Yeah? In the beginning, that might not happen straight away, but if you persist with this, you will notice emotions start to come up, and that's a great thing. One word of, of warning, when you start feeling emotional, make sure that you're not listening to the story. 
Because the mind will want to come in with the story and tell you why you're feeling like that. Maybe because your parents fucked up or maybe because your girlfriend did the wrong thing or maybe because of your boss or the government. Don't listen to the story. Because if you listen to the story and engage with the story, <clears throat> excuse me, the emotions will loop and you get stuck in a loop of negative emotion. And that's how people stay stuck in depression and, and difficult emotions for very long time sometimes. So you want to invite yourself and allow the emotions to come up and to be felt, to feel the energy of the emotion. And help that along with your breathing and with sound and with body movements. But don't listen to the story. Just let the story go. Just focus on feeling and allowing the energetic sensation of emotion or whatever else you're feeling in your body. Because like this, it will start to flow, it will start to leave. And the body will naturally start to liberate itself of any burdens of anything that it doesn't need to feel anymore. Okay. And like this, you will start to bring conscious awareness into every part of your body. So there won't be any hidden areas anymore. There won't be any numb areas or any energy blocks anymore. But you start to become present in every cell of your body. And that's what you need in order to start to master your ejaculations and beat premature ejaculation. So that's the third point. The third point was about starting to open up your body and let go of energy blocks really come home into your body. So physical exercise, preferably spontaneous exercise where you're letting the body guide you. And that can be fun. Putting music on while you're cooking. Allow yourself to dance with the music. If you've got children, they will love it. They will love getting into dancing with you. And really allow yourself to do those movements where you haven't before. You're very likely going to have ways of moving where you will feel that is right out of your comfort zone. Where you go like, oh my God, I can't do that, you know. I really encourage you to go there. Let the body show you what it needs. So let yourself really get into those hips. Yeah, start to stretch your stuff and start to really embody the full power of your sexual energy. Because for most men with premature and early ejaculation, you have um, had a connection with your sexual energy that you kind of freak yourself out with your arousal. When the arousal comes on, you kind of get anxious and you get overwhelmed and you check out so you're not fully present in the body and then from that place you don't have control. So this is all about coming home in inside yourself and really befriend your body. Welcome everything. Allow the emotions to release so that you can become an open vessel where your energy can flow. Your sexual energy can flow into your whole body so that you can start to feel empowered by your sexual energy instead of overpowered by your sexual energy. So you can start to feel really empowered and start to own that sexual charisma. Because when you start to allow yourself to, to grow your ability to hold larger and larger amounts of sexual arousal in your body without ejaculating, you're going to start to feel very empowered. You're going to start to feel stronger and stronger, more masculine, more in control, more vital, more mental clarity, more ability to focus on your projects, on your direction in life, all those things. So those are the three key areas of focus. And the great thing is that in this group, whether you're new or an, a member that's been here from when we started seven weeks ago, now in the eighth week, you have 35 videos where I am giving all sorts of different angles to all of these things we talked about now so that you can start to work on these things on your own. So if you haven't, go back and watch those videos. In a few days I will organize them also in the guides section in this group to make it easy to find. But right now they are hashtagged uh, with the theme name of the day that they belong to. So um, yeah, so that's how you can find them. Hashtag one magical mindset, for example, is the first video I did in this group on mindset. And hashtag one total tranquility, that's the meditation and the becoming calm videos. Hashtag one while wow your body. That's the first week of the getting into your body videos. 
and then we have the Thursdays about conscious touch, which is also nice, and the Friday videos, they were the finally sex magic. So you got lots of content in this group if you want much more help with this. And what I also want to let you know here, which I announced at the beginning, was that I've got something else for you here. So I realized that this can seem like a lot to get started with on your own, even with the help of what I've shared with you now and, and all the videos. It can still be tricky to put it together. So I do have a self-study audio program available where I'll take you through every single one of these steps and actually take you through the practice so you can do it with the sound of my voice and pause it wherever you need, of course. So I have this program available and, uh, and it's actually amazing in the way that it's a program that grows because it's in my membership port portal and whoever joins this program, uh, they will get access to a growing video library inside that membership portal um, where I'm making more and more videos that are based on the questions I'm getting from the people who bought the program. So already now there's a few extra videos there in the video library and the more people that get this program, they're encouraged to email me their questions. Yeah. And from those questions, I'm creating more videos. So this program will just become richer and richer and richer. And already now, there's a bunch of people who have done it and have gone back to me with, with really amazing results. So the great surprise is that I've, I've put this program now on, on a big discount, more than 50% discount from today. So if you want to get this program, maybe you heard about it before or maybe you haven't heard about it before right now, I've slashed the price. It used to be $111. Now it's $49. So uh, I'm going to pop the link here below and you can just click on the link and it will take you to the portal where you can sign in and, and get this program for yourself and, and get started with these practices if you want extra help with that. So I uh, really encourage you to do that because um, like I said, it's a program that grows and it will just become richer and richer as we go along. And I am, you know, I'm open to personal questions emailed to me where I will answer your question and also create a video where for the membership portal where I'm explaining whatever questions you have. So like that, I'm cooperating with the participants, even though it's a self-study program that you do by yourself at home. And since it's an audio program, you can listen to it also when you are, you know, <clears throat> driving or whatever you're doing. I'm starting to lose my voice now. <clears throat> Just going to get some drink. Okay guys, so what do you reckon? Did you get heaps of value from this today? Have you taken notes? If you're on the replay, let me know what you think about it as well. Pop me a comment in and the link to the audio program is here below if you want that extra support. So like I said, you can go back and watch all the videos in this group where I'm talking about all these steps if you want to do it on your own. If you want my help with all the steps where I guide you through it, then the audio program would be the way to go. $49.99 US dollars at the moment. And there's actually the option to buy an, an ebook for your partner as well. If you are partnered with a woman, there is a $5 ebook that you can buy that is especially for her so that she can understand what it is you're doing because it does take a little bit of explanation to let your partner know what you want to do because um, so that she can be supportive of your progress with this super important part of the piece of the puzzle that, that you get your partner to support you with this and she got everything to gain from it so it's usually an easy one, okay? Cool. I think that's it. So any questions guys right now before I jump off, let me know. If you have any questions right now, I'm happy to answer. Okay, Robin, I'm putting in the link right now, right here. Okay. There's the link. Okay. The Code to Lasting in Bed is the name of the program. And I will check again 
when I get off this video that the link is there in the comments underneath the replay as well. So there it is. Okay, guys, I really wish you all the best of luck with this. I realize there is work to be put in, but what a worthwhile work, you know, because this is not... This is not a quick fix, it's not a band-aid. It's not trying to, you know, desensitize yourself like the, you know, the medical establishment want to give you, you know, numbing creams and shit like that. You don't need to be numbed down. You just need to grow your ability to feel and hold pleasure in your body. Yeah? And it's a beautiful thing to be sensitive. It's a beautiful thing to have a strong sexual energy. You know, it's something to be proud of. You are alive and vibrant and how amazing is that? So I really wish you all the best with this. And uh, let me know if you have any other questions. I'm here to help you every step of the way. Okay. Thanks so much for listening and I will see you in the group.